Rolling All Cars, a copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Ventura Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars to broadcast 235 regarding a missing person. Be on the lookout for Ray Oswald. Described as male American, 5 feet 10 or 11 inches. 150 to 60 pounds. This man was last seen in the vicinity of Sunday, September 11th. That's all. Rolls and quits. much these days about an adequate defense, and all agree that the United States should be able to successfully defend itself if invaded by enemy forces. We are not looking for trouble, but if trouble comes looking for us, we must be prepared. When it comes to their automobiles, some motorists are attempting to beat off the ruthless attack of such arms of the teeth aggressors as wear, tear, friction, and break down with inadequate pea shooter motor oil. It can't be done, friends. The only language these forces of destruction understand is the last word in modern automotive armed resistance, real loose. This superior motor oil not only defends your motor against the onslaught of extreme heat at your highest speed, it fights back and never yet has it lost the battle. With a lightning fast encircling movement, Rio Lube completely surrounds your motor with a protective armor that cannot be dented by the fiery blasts of the enemy. So pure, so entirely free of traitorous sludge, gum, and carbon forming elements is this 100% paraffin based motor oil that even freezing weather cannot keep Rio Lube from marching on to perform its appointed duty. Give your motor an adequate defense against the rigors of summer driving, friends. Pilot your mechanized unit into the red and white Rio Grande headquarters nearest you in the morning and rearm with a crank case full of Rio Lube, the newest and finest motor oil sold in the West. The story we are to hear tonight was taken in the main from files of the office of the sheriff of Ventura County. We have asked, therefore, that Sheriff Howard Durley of Ventura open our program. Sheriff Durley. It is not the job of the law enforcement officer to look behind the crime for a motive that may or may not mitigate the offense. It is for the officer to find the criminal and bring him to justice. In the story we are to hear tonight, that is exactly what happened. It is doubtful if the case could have been so successfully concluded without the cooperation of the officers of lo other law enforcement districts. And in this case stands out another example of that splendid cooperation of police officers that is making the criminal's profession a most unprofitable one. I wish all to, to especially cite the work of District Attorney, Attorney William T. Selby and his men in helping solve this case. I shall reserve further comment on the story for the end of the program. On the morning of October 26th, the telephone in the office of Sheriff Durley in Ventura rang an insistent summons. Sheriff Durley speaking. Sheriff, this is Constable Ellis at Camarillo. Oh, yes, Ellis. What can I do for you? It's been reported to me that there's something wrong up at one of those cabins close to Somers. Well, it seems to be the trouble. Well, as far as I can make out, the place is pretty torn up. And it looks like there's a lot of bloodstains on the floor. Have you been in the place? No, it's locked up. I thought it might be best if you sent some of your men down to look the place over. All right, I'll do that. I'll send under Sheriff uh, Sider down there right away. He'll pick you up. Okay, Sheriff. I'll be ready. Oh, Bill... Want me, Howard? Yes. Take Carl Wallace and run down to Camarillo. Pick up Constable Ellis and take a look at the cabin he thinks needs investigating. What's the matter with it? I don't know. Ellis says it's all torn up inside. There's a lot of blood on the floor. Maybe somebody spilled something on the floor that looks like blood, but you better take a look anyway. You think we'd better take along one of the DA's men just in case? Well, might not be a bad idea at that. I'll call Arthur Waite and see if he wants to go down there with you. You tell Wallace to get his camera and stuff together. <laughs> Under Sheriff Sider, Deputy Carl Wallace, and Chief Deputy District Attorney Waite sped to Camarillo, picking up Ellis en route. Ellis directed them to the cabin in Somis. Carl, you better get some pictures of this place from the outside before we go in. 
I think one of the door and the padlock will be a good one. And then we can shoot a couple through the window. Okay. We're going to have to break the lock, Bill. No key? Well, whoever locked it must have taken it with him. The owner says he didn't have it locked. Well, there won't be much trouble to get in there, I guess. You got your pictures, Carl? I've got the door and the lock. I'll set up at the window while you're getting the door open. You got a hammer with you, Ellis? No, I haven't. Uh, there's one in my box right over there. All right. Oh, yeah. This ought to do the trick, all right. Man alive, look at that. Yeah, I told you this place was a mess. Whoever left this place did it in a hurry. Hmm. And how? Oh, well, we better let Carl get some pictures of this stuff before we start moving it. If you can get a shot from here, I think you can get those stings in. Yes, yes I believe you're right. I'll try it here. Do uh, you want some more? Well, you better get one from the northwest corner, too, Carl. Okay. And where did Mr. Wade go? He's looking over the ground outside. Looks like those blankets were piled up to hide something. Yes, and I see what it was. Look. It's a tent pole. Mm, looks like blood on it. Here's a hat that was under that bedding. Hmm. Stetson. Sold by Evans Style Headquarters in Pomona. Hey, here's something that may come in handy. A chauffeur's badge issued by the state of Kansas. Ought well, to be able to trace that easily enough. Yeah. Well, I don't see anything else to do around here. We've got to take this stuff back to Ventura and tag it for identification. You know, there's a bare possibility that some of those boys over at the CCC camp might know who was staying here lately. Yeah, that's a possibility. Hey, let's drive over and have a talk with some of them. Well, quite a bunch of the boys around. Yeah, they're through work for the day. Well, we might as well find out what we can. Hey, boys, uh, boys. Yeah? Uh, we'd like to get a little information from you fellas. Oh, sure. Say, what can we do for you? Have you seen anybody around the cabins up the road here? Why? Well, we were just trying to find out if anybody's been seen around that little place on Donlin and Los Angeles Avenue. Anything wrong up there? We don't know yet. Well, I think this man knows something about this. I do, too. Hey, where are you fellas from? I'm from the sheriff's office. This is Constable Ellis. Well, why didn't you say you were officers? Sure, I've seen a couple of fellas around that cabin. Yeah, I sent them up there myself. That's so? When was this? Oh, about a month ago. Well, maybe a month and a half. How did you happen to send the fellas up to that cabin? Well, I was in camp here one evening about sundown when these two fellas come up, you know, in a car. And I stopped and asked them. Hey, buddy, any place around here where we can camp out a while? Yeah, it might be. Where is it? Well, there's lots of places where you can camp out, but... But there's a cabin on this road just a ways. Yeah, right close to Los Angeles Avenue. Nobody's been living there for some time now. Yeah, you ought to be able to stay there. Yeah, but we can't pay rent on a cabin. Well, who's going to make you? The place is empty, and the worst they can do is they find you in there, so run you out. Yeah, maybe charge you a buck or two for rent. Guess it's worth trying anyway. Sure. Hey, so you got a Texas license. He just drives through? No, nope, can work in the orchards over around Redland. Well, I think you'll be able to get some work around here. Yeah, if you're looking for it. I'll be seeing you. Then him and this other fellow, they drove on up the road. Did you see them after that? Oh, sure. I dropped in on them several times. The older fellow and I had a lot to talk about. You know, me being a CCC camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said he'd been in the Army himself. Yeah, he didn't have any trouble getting a good job whenever he wanted it. What was the other man like? Well, he wasn't exactly a man. Well, that is, he looked like a kid. You know, about 17 or 18, maybe. Just a youngster. But he was uh, kind of husky. What kind of a car was it? Oh, great Ford Coupe, I believe. With a Texas license number, eh? Yeah, that's right. Have you seen these fellas lately? Well, kind of think of it. Yes, I haven't seen either one of them for more than a month. No, not since the first part of September. Don't happen to know the names they went by, do you? Well, let's see now. Well, all I ever heard a youngster call was, was Floyd. The older man's name was Ray... Oh, Ray something. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Ray. Ever see either, either of these fellows with a chauffeur's badge on his hat? Well, I think the young fellow had some sort of a badge. <laughs> well, I don't pay much attention to it, though. Well, we won't worry about that. That'll be easy enough to check up on. Back in the office... Deputy Wallace dispatched a teletype message to the Commissioner of Motor Vehicles of the state of Kansas, the original place of issue of the chauffeur's badge. Please forward any information regarding holder of Kansas chauffeur badge number 52769. Urgently need present address if known. Signed, Durley, Sheriff's Office, Ventura County, California. 
Badge number 52769, issued to Glen Gary Holt in Kansas. Present address unknown. Permit expired June 1937. Suggest you communicate with Sheriff Singer of Holton. Signed, Nickamere Motor Vehicle Department. Sheriff R.E. Singer, Holton, Kansas. Request information regarding present address, Glen Gary, resident of your county. Glen Gary, last heard from at Redlands, California. Working fruit ranch. Signed, Singer, Holton, Kansas. Sheriff Che of San Bernardino County and to the Chief of Police of Redlands. Please check on present address of Jen Gary, supposed to be in Redlands. Do not question but wire Durley, Sheriff, Ventura County. Unable to locate any person by the name of Gary in Redlands, signed Che, San Bernardino. Department of Motor Vehicles, Licensed Division, Sacramento. Request information regarding motor vehicle registration to Glen Gary, Redlands, or anywhere in California. Motor vehicle registration for Glen Gary. No visitor's permit issued in his name. Division of Registration, Motor Vehicle Department, Sacramento. Unable to make further headway with the information at hand, the officers handled the case, contented themselves with running down every lead, no matter how unimportant it seemed. At last, on January 7th, word came from Sacramento regarding the registration of a car to Glen Gary of Redlands. Deputy Wallace immediately conferred with Sheriff Durley. Well, Sheriff, here's something definite to go on in that Somers case. You read? The motor vehicle department just wired that two cars have been registered to Glen Gary. One of them is a Cadillac sedan, the other one's a Ford Roadster. Well, that's something to work on. What address does this fella give? Well, on East Pearl Street in Redlands. I guess you and Ed Hearn might as well hop over there and have a look at things. I believe Sheriff Shays had Gordon Cram working on the case from that end. Might get in touch with him and see what you can find out in this fellow Gary. Okay, Chief. I'll find Ed and shove off. Stop here, Cram. We'll uh, look around a little. You see anybody, Hearn? No, house is vacant. Sure this is the right address? The one the motor vehicle department gave us? I've been out here before and there was somebody living in this place. I know the neighborhood pretty well. They haven't been gone long. No, if this place was occupied in September? I think it was, but I don't know who lived here. No who owns it? Yeah, the bank. Uh, might look the place over, Carl. I guess so. If we don't find anything here, we can check with the post office for forwarding addresses. Thoroughly going over the place looking for possible clues, Hearn, Wallace, and Deputy Cram from the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office at last realized that their search was futile. Checking with the post office, it was bound that no forwarding address had been left for the occupants of the house on Pearl Street. Now, that doesn't make sense. It's awfully peculiar. The fellow would leave without making some provision for his mail. Maybe he's not expecting any. On the other hand, he may be just careless. He hasn't changed his address with the motor vehicle department either. Well, where do we go from here? If that bird's in Redlands, we'll find him. We have to ring every doorbell in town. Wait a minute. No matter where he goes, Gary's got to have gas and electricity. That is, if he lives in town. Well, why don't we check with the Bureau of Power and Light? The office is right around the corner. Come on, let's do it. We might find out something. Good morning. Could I help you? Uh, you might. We want to see the manager of the office. Yes, sir. Just come right through here, please. I don't know why we didn't think of this before. This is the logical place to start from. Right in here, please. Mr. Jones will see you in just a moment. Thanks. Do you know this fellow, Cram? Don't believe I do. I imagine he'll help us if he can. Oh, good morning, gentlemen. Something I can do for you? I hope so. This is Mr. Hearn, Ventura County Sheriff's Office. How do you do, How do, you do? This is Mr. Cram, San Bernardino Sheriff's Office. How do you do? How do you do? I'm Carl Wallace from Ventura. Oh, I'm very glad to know you, Mr. Wallace. Now, we have an idea that you can help us, if you will. We realize that you don't have to do it, but it will be a favor to us, if you will. Why, well, I'll do whatever I can, gentlemen. What's your problem? Well, we have an address here for a man named Gary. Glenn Gary. And we find that the house is vacant at that address. Now, we want to know if you have a service connection record on that name for any other address. Mm, just a minute. Yes, sir? Uh, Mary, have we had a change of address or any service connection on Glen Gary within the last month? Mm, yes, sir. Uh, we have a Glen Gary at 23 Sacramento Street, Mr. Joe. Mm, thank you, Mary. 23 Sacramento Street. There you are, boys. Hope that'll help you out. I've got a hundred will, Mr. Jones.
Hey, Carl, there's number 23, and there's a Ford Coupe parked in front. Yeah, that's all right, except it's a black one. The one we're looking for is gray. <laughs> Ever hear of paint? Uh-huh. You got a Texas license number, though. Look, Cram, let's drive on around the corner, and I'll go back and find out about Carl. Okay, we'll wait for you. Yeah. I'll be right back. Yes? Yeah, good morning. I, uh, I'm doing a little checking up on old automobile licenses and out-of-state cars. No, I see. Are you Mrs. Gary? Yes. That car parked out in front, does that belong to you? No. Belongs to a man named Oswald. Ray Oswald. Mm, is he here? No, he isn't. Well, how did the car happen to be here? My brother left it here right around Christmas time, or a little before. And where's your brother now? I think he's back in Kansas. Kansas, eh? Mm-hmm. Where'd you say this Oswald fellow is? Well, I think he's in jail. My brother said he had been arrested for stealing gasoline. Oh, you don't know where that was, do you? Up close to Ventura someplace, I understand. Uh, you haven't been driving that car, have you? Uh, no, sir. We tried to get a license for it, but we couldn't. So we just left it parked there. I see. Well, don't try to use it till you get a license for no, it. No, we won't. Uh, by the way, what's your brother's name? Floyd. Floyd Crank. And he's back in Kansas? Uh, yes, sir. Close in Kansas. He came out here with us last June, I think it was. Uh, uh, yes, the latter part of June. He went back to Holton just a few weeks ago. And by the way, Mrs. Gary, where's your husband? He's working on the Arch Ranch, out on West Pioneer Boulevard. Well, never mind. You tell him I'll be around to see him later. And not to drive that car without a license. No, I'll tell him. How'd you make out, Carl? That's the car, all right. It's been painted. Had a good look at it before I left. Some gray color showing under the black in spots. Who does it belong to? A fellow named Oswald. Never heard of him. Gary works on the Arth Ranch. You know where it is? Sure, out on Pioneer. Now let's go out and talk to Mr. Gary. Well, there's a fellow sitting on the running board of that car. Let's talk to uh, him. Isn't that the number of the Cadillac that's registered to Glen Gary? Oh, yes, that's it. Oh, good morning. Good morning. You don't happen to know a man named Gary who works around here, do you? Glenn Gary? Yes, that's the name. Know him? Maybe. Why? Oh, I just want to talk to him. What about? Do you know him? Sure. You know where he is? Sure. Where? No idea. I'm Glenn Gary. Oh, that's so. We're from the sheriff's office. I'm going to ask you about that Ford parked in front of your house. Yeah? What about it? Been driving it? Oh, a little. Without a California license? No, I couldn't get one. Why not? No pink slip. I, I don't know the car. Who does? A fellow named Oswald. Ray Oswald? Yeah. Now, where'd you get the car? My brother-in-law left it in here. What's his name? Krantz. Floyd Krantz. Where's he? He's back in Kansas. Been back there a couple of weeks. Where's Oswald? Well, Floyd said he was in jail up north somewhere for stealing gasoline. He got six months for it. Now, how'd Floyd get the car? He said Oswald asked him to keep it till he got out. Floyd had to go back to Kansas, so he left the car with us. He said he'd write Oswald where to find it. I see. Well, look, you'll get into a lot of trouble if you drive that car without a license. Now, we're going to tow it down to a garage in Redlands and store it. Now, if you get hold of Oswald, tell him to check in with the motor vehicle department about that light. Oh, sure, I'll be glad to. Oh, and incidentally, if you hear from Floyd, tell him he'd better get in touch with Oswald about that car. Okay, I will. I uh, just got a letter from him this morning, but he'll be writing again in a week or so. Uh, is that so? Now, what's his address? We might as well get in touch with him ourselves. Okay, here it is. Yes, uh, 810 Ohio Street, Holton, Kansas. Okay. Oh, thanks. By the way, uh, did you ever see this before? Well, sure. Well, that's my chauffeur's badge. I sent it to Floyd last year, just after we got out here. You mean Floyd used it all last summer? Well, yes, he said he lost it. Hey, well, where did you fellows get it? Oh, it was turned into it. Well, it's expired now, anyway. <laughs> I wouldn't have any use for it. Well, we'll just keep it in our files, then, if that's okay with you. Yes, that's all right. If I can help you out any time, let me know. Oh, thanks. We'll do that. And by the way, Oswald's suitcase is down at my house. You'd better tell my wife to give it to you. We'll do that, too. on your mind, girl. It just occurred to me that we're doing an awful lot of work on the assumption that somebody's been murdered. When, as a matter of fact, this guy Oswald may be safe and sound in somebody's jail. Well, that's easy to find out. Yes, it is. Meantime, though, let's look at that car over there and get that suitcase. Maybe we'll find something. What 
trying to find in the back of that Ford, Carl. Blood. Yeah, I knew it. Ever since you've been in that laboratory, you've been one of these scientific sleuths. Yeah, yeah, I know. Give me a hand with these things in here. Well, hand them out to me. Well, here's a wrench, an old pair of pants, a tire pump. Uh oh. Don't tell me. Let me guess. It's blood. Maybe. Here's something else that might prove interesting. Unless I miss my guess, that is blood on that piece of tin. Remind me to get a bottle of glacial acetic acid on my way back. I'll need it to run a benzidine test on this stuff. Returning to Ventura, the officers went over every piece of evidence thus far collected, then met in Sheriff Dirty's office to discuss plans. Well, boys... We've really got a case on our hands, though it's about the craziest case I've ever seen. We're not positive a murder's been committed. We have no body and no suspect. Look, Sheriff, we found human blood all over that cabin up at Somers. We found that chauffeur's badge, and we've traced it to this fellow Kranz. We know that whoever had that badge was in that cabin. We also know that there was another man in that cabin, and we know it was Ray Oswald. What makes you so sure? You remember that suitcase? Yes. You remember we found a penitentiary discharge for Ray Oswald from Arkansas in that suitcase? Sure. Well, this morning, I got Ray Oswald's fingerprints back from Arkansas, and they matched fingerprints we got off Oswald's car. Nobody's saying the car doesn't belong to Oswald, so don't... Oh, come in, Mr. Selby. I've uh, been talking to Wallace about that Somers case. Oh, yes. Who's working with you on that, Wallace? Ed Hearn. He's in bed with the flu. Well, the sheriff thought that as district attorney, I ought to be getting in on this. Well, I was just telling him that I know positively from fingerprint identification that Ray Oswald was in that cabin at Somers. Well, how do you know? Well, uh, here's a clock we found up there. Right here on the back. Mm -hmm. We have a fine set of prints. They are Ray Oswald's fingerprints. Well, and that definitely places him in the cabin prior to last September. That's right. Well, where is he now? Nobody knows. Floyd Kranz told the Garys that Oswald was in jail for stealing gasoline. But we've checked every jail in California and parts of Arizona and Nevada, as well as Washington and Oregon, and no man of his description or with his prints is in jail. What do you think has happened to him? Well, as I told the sheriff, there's blood on the cabin floor and on the beds. And I found blood in the turtle back at the coupe. Now, obviously, something had been carried in that turtle back. And I think it was the body of Ray Oswald. This is all a little fantastic, Carl. We've got nothing to establish a murder... The man might have had a newsbreed for all we know. Now that won't explain the blood on the floor. The signs of a heavy object having been dragged over the floor and out to the road. Nor the stains on the tire pump. Nor the stains on the floor of the car under the floor covering. Now, those things aren't accidents. But they're not necessarily murder either. Besides that, where's Oswald? Cran said he was in jail. Well, obviously he's not. Now, it doesn't make sense that he'd just disappear, leaving all his stuff behind. Nothing in this case makes sense. And besides that... I found this little book in the glove compartment of the car. Now, here's a notation. Ventura Bean Fields, $5.50. Hmm. Now, this book has Floyd Cran's name on it, so obviously they were up there together. Cran's is in Kansas. But where's Oswald? Well, Carl, maybe you have got a case here. Oh, uh, Howard, you wired the sheriff back in Holton. Uh, that's the place, isn't it? Yes, Holton, Kansas. Well, you wired him to pick up this Cran's boy, and Carl and I will take a run back there and see what we can find out. Accordingly, on January 22nd, District Attorney Selby and Deputy Wallace left for Holton, Kansas. Meantime, Sheriff Singer had arrested Floyd Kranz on a vagrancy charge, holding him for the California officers. Three days later, they sat in the office of Sheriff Singer, questioning the suspected man. Uh, uh, Floyd, these men want to ask you some questions. So just sit right down over there. Okay. Any Anybody got a match? Yes, here. Yes. Ever been in California, Floyd? Sure. Where'd you live? With, with some relatives in Redlands. How long ago? Oh, from July to sometime in November or December. Live anywhere else except Redlands? No. Never lived up close to Ventura? Uh, give me uh, give me another match, would you? I, I, I can't keep this pipe lit. No? No, I, I've never been any further north than, than Los Angeles. This your notebook? Well, let me see. Yeah. Yeah, that's mine. That's your writing? Yeah. Yeah, that's mine. It says Ventura, Beanfields, 550. What about that? I I never wrote that. Who did? I don't know. Did Ray Oswald write it? Give me another match, will you? How about it, Floyd? Do you know Ray Oswald? No. Ever ride in the Ford Coupe with a Texas license number? No, I never did. Ever see anything like that badge, Kranz? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen lots of them. Yes, you probably have. That being a Kansas chauffeur's badge. But have you ever seen that one? Well... I, I don't know. Well, let's put it this way. 
Did you ever see a Kansas badge like that in Redlands, California? Yes. Where? My brother-in-law, Glengarry, he had one. What did you do with it? Well, he, he gave it to me. And what did you do with it? I, well, I, I, I pinned it on my hat. And where is your hat? I, uh... Oh, what's the use of all this beating around the bush? I, I know you guys are from California, and I, I know what you want. Come on. Come on. Let's get it over with. All right, Floyd. You know what we want? Why don't you tell us about it? Well, I I met this guy, Oswald, in the pool hall in Redlands. He asked me where I was working, and I, I, I told him I wasn't working right then, and he asked me if I'd like to go north with him around Santa Barbara. I, I said I wouldn't. So we loaded up in his Ford and started out. Did you stop anywhere on the way, Floyd? Oh, yeah, yeah. We stopped and cooked supper that night. Then then we went on up to Highway 99. Stop anywhere else? Well, when we got close to Ventura, we stopped at the CCC camp and talked to a fellow about a place to stay. And Well, he told us about a cabin up the road a piece, so we went up there and started living in the place. He, he, he said it wouldn't cost us nothing unless somebody caught us up there. What did you do then, Floyd? Well, we worked in the bean fields a few days, but... I never got any money for it. Why not? Well, it, it was Saturday, the, the 11th of September. Oswald went over and got the check, and, and then when he came back... Did you... Did you get the check? No. Well, you're trying to kid me. I, I want my part of the money. You ain't going to get it. What do you think of that? Well, I, I don't think nothing of it. I just, I just want my money. Yeah? What for? Well, I, I need some clothes, some, some work clothes. You got enough clothes. How many times do I have to tell you about keeping those ants out of the sugar? Oh, what do you think I am? I, I can't keep the ants out of the sugar. Well, it's your job to keep things straight around here. You ain't done nothing since we got up here but waste things. First, you won't eat the meat because it's tainted. Next, you don't like the bread because it's dry and hard. Now it's ants in the sugar. Can't you do nothing but beef? I can't help it about the ants. I, I ain't got nothing to stop them with. For the love of Mike, they're in the jam, too. You've let those lousy ants spoil everything. I ought to give you a belt and a jaw. Oh, yeah? Why don't you get any ideas like that, Bob? Oh, tough guy, huh? Look, kid, don't get hard with me or I'll bounce a can of beans off that thick skull of yours. Yeah? Yeah. I'm getting fed up with that pickle puss. Well, don't get any ideas of changing it. Here's a present for you, pal. Keep away from me, Ray. Keep, keep away, I tell you. I'm going to change that baby face of yours, you little punk. Keep away from me, I tell you. I'll... I'll break this tip full of your head. Try it, and I'll break every bone in that screwy head of yours. Give away. Give away. Oh. Ray. Ray. I killed him. He's, he's dead. He's, he's dead. <laughs> a moment, Sheriff Durley will give us additional facts about the program. Friends, you can readily appreciate the handicap under which Sheriff Durley and his men would have worked had they been forced to pursue the automobile of the criminal in a horse and buggy. On the contrary, they employed the most modern facilities known to law enforcement authorities. The teletype, the equipment of criminological experts up to the minute automobiles and powering those cars, Rio Grande cracked. The quicker starting gasoline of maximum power, speed, and endurance that always gets its man. That makes it easy to understand why Rio Grande Crack powers more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other automotive equipment wherever it is sold than any other brand. And that is why officials of the state of California and the government of the United States rely upon the superior gasoline to provide swift, sure, and more economical power for their public-serving automotive equipment. Many thousands of motorists are equally discriminating. One tank full will convince you, too, that for all-around police car performance, the gasoline of today and tomorrow is Rio Grande Crack, the motor fuel that is first in public service and now... Sheriff Durley. While Wallace and Selby were en route to Kansas, a body was found in a San Bernardino Canyon, and through the efforts of Sheriff Shea Identif Identification Bureau and Sheriff Shea himself and the untiring work of Deputy Wallace, this body was definitely identified as Ray Oswald. On March 29th, Floyd Crane's mild-mannered Kansas farm boy pleaded guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to prison. Thank you, Sheriff Durley. Tour Sheriff's Office calling all cars, attention all cars, cancellation broadcast 235 regarding a murder. Suspect in this case is now in custody. That's all. 
todos los huesos. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley. <laughs>